So now that we've learned how to add and subtract and multiply and divide polynomials, it's now time to learn a few things about applying this concept. And one major place where we apply this concept is finding area and perimeter and writing expressions for area and perimeter. So one thing to note, and you don't have to write this part down, but area and perimeter, you got to know what that means. Area is basically how much space fits inside a shape and usually if we're doing the area of a rectangle you're gonna do the length times the width it's the same for a square as well except that when you're doing a square you know that the sides are the same so sometimes you see the formula just say s squared which means you take the side and you square it which is basically the same thing as doing the side times the side now perimeter perimeter is when you are adding up the lengths and the widths around the shape. Oftentimes, all you have to do is add all sides, but there's a formula for a rectangle. The perimeter of a rectangle would just be two times the length plus two times the width, right? Because you have two lengths of a rectangle are the same, and so you would add those together or multiply it by two, and then the widths are the same, so you would either add the two widths together or you would multiply it by two. So now let's go ahead and take a look at number one. It says a square has sides 3x minus eight. Well, let's go ahead and draw a square. Well, what do we know about a square? A square has four equal sides. And so if I'm saying that it has a side that's called 3x minus eight, well, that means that 3x minus eight goes all the way around the shape. So when it says find its area, what we're doing is we're just gonna do 3x minus eight squared, or that's the same as 3x minus eight times 3x minus eight. And then we can apply FOIL. Now if you're in my everyday class, you may know a shortcut to this already. Every other day class, you're gonna learn the shortcut next class. But right now, we're just going to go through and do FOIL. So we're going to do 3x times 3x is 9x squared. 3x times negative 8 is negative 24x. Negative 8 times 3x is negative 24x. And then negative 8 times negative 8 is positive 64. And then our middle terms are like terms, so we combine their coefficients. So 9x squared minus 48x plus 64 is the answer to that. Okay, now the next question over here, kind of lost in translation over there, is find its perimeter. Well, let's think. The perimeter is the distance all the way around. So I could say 3x minus 8, I could say 3x minus 8, 3x minus 8 plus 3x minus 8 plus 3x minus 8, or if you think about this, when you're adding up all the sides, since they're the same, can't you just do 4 times 3x minus 8, right? And then here we could just distribute the 4, and we'll get 12x minus 32. Now let's take a look at number 2. Sometimes you have to come up with what the length and the width of the rectangle expressions are. For example, this one right here is saying the length of a rectangle is 4 less than 5 times its width. So we're going to come up with an expression that means 4 less than 5 times its width. In this expression, we don't actually know what the width is, so I'm going to call my width W. So over to the side, I'm going to draw a rectangle. And it's always a good idea to draw a rectangle or draw the shape you're talking about when you're doing things like this. So it says the length is 4 less than 5 times its width. Well, I'm going to say, I don't know what the width is, so I'm going to call this side over here W, which means over here is also W. But the length is being compared to the width, so that's going to be 5W minus 4. When something says less than, that means you're subtracting 4 from whatever comes after the than. So we do 5 times the width, which we don't know what that is, so we call that W. Less than means we're subtracting 4, so that's where the 5W minus 4 comes from. And this has to be W because that's the side we don't know. 
which also means that this top guy up here is also 5w minus 4 as well. That's a 5. Having trouble writing that 5. So now, find the area. Well, the area of a shape is just the length times the width. So I'm just going to take the w times the 5w minus 4. You just take both sides, the length and the width, and you multiply. And this is a problem where all I have to do is distribute, because it's a monomial times a binomial. So w times 5w is 5w squared minus w times 4 is negative 4w. So it becomes minus 4w. And we're done. That is the area. Now, when it gets to perimeter, the perimeter, you can just look at all of the sides and you can just add them all up if you want. But you have to remember you've got two of the five w's minus four's and you've got two of the w's. So many of you could just look at your picture if you've drawn all four sides and just add up all your like terms. However, you will sometimes see me use the formula. And the formula for perimeter is that we're gonna do two times the length. Well, the length is five w minus 4, right? Because we've got two 5w minus 4s. Plus 2 times the width, so that's 2w. And then I'm going to distribute this 2 here, and I'm going to get 10w minus 8. And then I'm going to add 2w, and then I'm going to combine my like terms. 10w plus 2w is 12w minus 8. And that is the expression for the perimeter of this shape. Now number three, we're going to apply this kind of thing to a swimming pool. So this says a rectangular swimming pool's length is five less than twice its width. Label the pool's length and width to the right. So we're going to say that this rectangle right here is the pool. Now it says that the pool's length, which would be this part right here, is five less than, so subtract five from twice its width. Do we know what the width is? We don't. So we're going to call the width w. And the length is going to be 2w minus 5. Now you might want to label all four sides. So I've got 2, 2w two minus 5, and then I've got a w. So now it says give a simplified expression for the perimeter of the pool. So perimeter, again, I'm adding up all the sides. Now I'm going to do it a little bit different this time. I'm going to go ahead and just add up all the sides, right? I've got four sides here. Well, let's look at my w's. I've got w plus 2w plus 2w plus w plus w. Well, that is 4, 5, 6w. So we can just write 6w and then negative 5 and negative 5 is negative 10. So 6w minus 10. Another way to have done that problem was to just write 2 times this distribute the 2, plus 2 times this, and then combine your like terms. But I think it's easier just to add up all four sides. Really simple. All right, part B, give the simplified expression for the area of the pool. Area is length times width. So if this is my length and this is my width, I'm just going to multiply these together. And so I'm going to put W times 2w minus 5. So you're multiplying the w by everything. So you have to distribute it out and you get 2w squared minus 5w. Alright, so that's the area of the pool and up here is the perimeter of the pool. Let's take a look at the next question. Alright, so now we are adding on to this pool. It now says, suppose we are going to build a walkway around the swimming pool above that is 10 feet wide all the way around the pool. Draw the walkway around the pool and give the dimensions of the new rectangle that you drew. So this is the part where I sometimes just lose people, okay? The important part about this question is that we are drawing a walkway around the pool and it's gonna be 10 feet wide all the way across. So I'm gonna pretend like this is my walkway and all the way across here is 10 feet. So that means from here to here, from here to here is 10. And from here to here is also 10 feet. And that's true all the way around. From here to here 
is 10, and from here to here is also 10. From here to here is 10. Whoops, that's a 10. From here to here is 10. From here to here is 10. From here to here is 10. Okay, so now I know the dimensions of my pool, so I need to think about, I want the dimensions of the outside of the pool. So what I want, I'm gonna go with this height or the width right here, this part right here. If you think about this, we know this space, the length from here to here is W, right? And from here to here is 10. And from here to here is also 10. So this whole thing has got to include the length of W, this part, plus this part, which we said was 10, plus this part, which we said was 10. So let me see if I can even make you a better visual. So from here to here is W, and from here to here is 10, and from here to here is 10. So this whole length right here is going to be W plus 20, right? Because this is W, and then we're adding on 10 to both sides, so we're adding on 20. The same thing is going to be true for this next bit. So if you think about it, from this piece to this piece, look, these two sides are 2W minus 5, and we're going to do the same thing. To get this whole length, we are going to add on this part plus this part. And since we know that all the way around this thing is 10, this is 10 and this is 10, I'm going to add 10, and 10 is 20, to 2W minus 5. So I'm basically taking the 2W minus 5, and I'm going to add 20 to that. And so think about it. These are like terms. Negative 5 plus 20 is 15. So this is going to be 2W plus 15. Okay? Now, the reason we need to know these dimensions is to answer the very first question here. A, suppose you want to put a fence around the walkway. So we're going to put a fence around this thing right here. Write an expression to represent how much fencing you would need to do this. So if you think about it, I'm going to do this plus this plus this plus this. Or 2 times this side plus 2 times this side, and that's the way I'm going to do this problem. I'm going to do 2 times w plus 20 plus 2 times 2w plus 15. And so now I'm going to distribute, and I'm going to get 2w plus 40. Distribute the 2 to the next set, plus 4w plus 30. Combine your like terms, 2w and 4w is 6w, and 40 plus 30 is 70. And that's the expression for the perimeter of the fencing that we have to actually get. Save this answer, or keep in mind that that's where this goes. So I'm actually going to um, put a line under the fence around the walkway. That's important because we're going to come back to this question at some point. All right, so now B. Write an expression for the area of the entire space, pool and walkway. So what I'm talking about is the area of all of this. Well, if you think this is just a whole big rectangle, we're just going to do length times width. And since the length is 2w plus 15, and the width is w plus 20, we're just going to multiply. And then distribute. 2w times w is 2w squared. And then 2w times 20 is 40w. I said distribute. I meant do foil. Now we're going to do 15 times w is plus 15w. And then 15 times 20 is 300. So we have plus 300. And now we're going to combine our like terms. 40w plus 15w gives us 55w. So I've got 2w squared plus 55w plus 300. And that's the expression of the area of the entire space, the walkway and the pool, just the area. All right. 
Now, letter C. Write an expression for the area of the walkway. Okay, so I just want the walkway. So let's think about this. The walkway is this piece right here, all the way around. Now, we don't have an expression for the area of this yet. However, we already have expressions for the area of the entire space and the pool. So think about that. If I know the area of this whole thing, and then I know the area of just this piece, but I just want this outside piece, what do I do with the area of the whole thing and then the area of the pool? I subtract them, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the area of the entire thing, which we just found. This is the area of the entire thing. So I'm gonna take this, 2w squared plus 55w plus 300 and I'm going to subtract the area of the pool. Now the area of the pool, you have to go back up and look at number 3. The area of the pool was the answer we got for 3b where it says give a simplified expression for the area of the pool. We got there 2w squared minus 5w, right? And so now we're going to subtract those. Distribute your minus sign because we're subtracting all of it. So then you're going to have 2w squared plus 55w plus 300 minus 2w squared plus 5w because we're basically subtracting a negative 5w, so it's like we're adding. So now when I combine like terms, the 2w squared minus 2w squared those terms cancel out. 55w plus 5w is 60w plus our 300. And that would be the expression of just the area of the walkway. Now at any point, if you lost me, you should go back and try to re listen again because this is kind of a lot. I understand that. All right, number five, I'm asking you now to look at everything that we've just done with that pool. And I'm saying, now, suppose the actual pool is 18 feet wide. Use your expressions from above to find the perimeter of the pool, the amount of fencing you'd actually need, and the area of the walkway. So let's start with A, the perimeter of the pool. We do not need to start from scratch here. You found the perimeter of the pool already. Go back up and look at your paper. At what question did we find the perimeter of the pool? We found the perimeter of the pool on question 3a. Do you see that? It says give the perimeter of the pool. Well, what did we get? We got that the perimeter of the pool is 6w minus 10, right? Well, I'm saying suppose that the pool is 8 feet wide. Isn't that w, right? 6w means 6 times the width of the pool minus 10. So all I have to do is evaluate the expression. I do 6 times 18 minus 10. And then I just do the math. 6 times 18 is 108. And then I'm going to subtract 10. 108 minus 10 is 98 feet. So I have 98 feet as the perimeter of the pool. All right, letter B, amount of fencing you would need. We'll go back up and look at where did we figure out fencing. We figured out fencing at 4A. We figured out that the how much fencing we would need would be represented with 6w plus 70. So now I know that the width is 18, so I'm just going to put 18 into w. So 6 times 18 plus 70. So 108 plus 70. So I'm going to need 178 feet of fencing to fence in my pool. Letter C, the area of the walkway. So the area of the walkway, we already have an expression for that in letter or number 4C. It was 60W plus 300, so we're going to use that. We're going to start with 60W plus 300, and then we're going to replace the W with 18 feet. So we're going to do 60 times 18 plus 300, and 60 times 18 is 1,000. 80 plus 300 is 1,380 
here we would say feet squared because it's area. And area is how many square feet fit into something. All right, let's move on to the next part. All right, I encourage you to stop the video and try to fill in this top chart here without me or at least try to visualize what's going on because sometimes you just listen to me and without actually thinking. So this is talking about a picture frame. So we've got a picture to the right represents a picture frame. The width of the frame around the picture is five units. So I've labeled here that this part is the picture and this is what's inside the frame. And the frame, this is the frame right here, the frame has a width and it says right here that the frame is five units, okay? Then I've given you the length of the entire picture frame. I've given you the length or the width of the entire picture with the frame, okay? So now what I want here is I want the length of just the picture. So I want this piece. So I want you to think about this piece is how much less than this piece. Well, I just said that the width from here to here was what? Five, which would mean the width from here to here is five. So this is five all the way around. It's five units. So so if I'm going to try to find the length of the picture, just the picture frame, so if I'm trying to find this right here, I need to, if you look, this whole thing is 2x minus 4. And I just went from here to here. So we're going to, going from the outside in, we're going to subtract, right? Because from here to here is 5, and from here to here is 5. So I'm taking away 5 from this side, I'm taking away another 5 from this side, so I'm taking away a total of 10. So I'm taking that 2x minus 4, and I'm subtracting 10. So that's going to give me 2x minus 14 here. So the length of just the picture without the frame is going to be 2x minus 14 because we're taking away that five units from both sides. And so now if I'm going to do the width of just the picture, I'm going to do the same thing, right? So I want this piece. Since this whole piece is x plus 1, I have to take away this part, right? Because we just went from here to here. Well, this is 5 and this is 5. So you're doing x plus 1 and you're taking away from that 10. So I'm going to do x plus 1 minus 10. Well, 1 minus 10 is negative 9. So this part right here is going to be x minus 9. So the width is x minus 9. Now, we're going to use all of this up here to help us answer the next questions. And again, if you feel like you've got it, turn it off and then fast forward and see if you've got the right answers. So perimeter of just the picture without the frame. Well, the picture of the perimeter of just the picture without the frame would be this right here. So I'm using these dimensions. How many 2x minus 14s do I have? Well, I have two of those. So I'm going to multiply 2 times 2x minus 14. And then I'm going to add to that the other side. How many x minus 9s do I have? I have two of those. So I'm going to do 2 times x minus 9. And I'm going to distribute. So I'm going to get 4x minus 28 plus 2x minus 18. I'm going to combine my like terms. And when I combine my like terms, I'm going to get 6x minus 46. All right, now the perimeter around the outside of the entire picture frame. Well, that's when I'm going to use these dimensions. Nope, not these, these dimensions. The length of the entire picture with the frame and the width of the entire picture with the frame. So I want the perimeter of this, right? Perimeter is you're adding up all the sides. So in this case, you could even double this in your head if you want to, right? If I'm going to do 2x minus 4 twice, that's a total of 4x minus 8. So if you want to take some shortcuts here, you can. That's going to be 4x minus 8 plus, well, x plus 1 and another x plus 1. Well, that's going to be 2x plus 2, right? So all I'm doing now is I'm just kind of distributing in my head. And now I am adding my like terms. So that's going to leave me with 6x, negative 8 plus 2 is negative 6. So 6x minus 6. All right, so now area of just the picture without the frame. So that would be the area of just the picture. 
using this one and this one. Area. Remember, area is length times width. So I'm going to multiply these together. And we are going to need to use FOIL to do that because it's a binomial times a binomial. So 2x minus 14 times x minus 9. And we're going to do FOIL. So 2x times x is 2x squared. 2x times negative 9 is negative 18x. Negative 14 times x is negative 14x. And then negative 14 times negative 9 is positive 126. Handwriting is going a little crazy here because I'm trying to write small. And now underneath there, I'm going to combine my like terms in the middle. So I'm going to end up with 2x squared minus 32x plus 126. All right, the next one. Area of the entire picture, including the frame. Well, these are the, th the dimensions for the entire picture. So again, area, multiply. So I'm going to do 2x minus 4 times x plus 1. And I'm going to do FOIL. 2x times 2x, or 2x times x is 2x squared. 2x times 1 is 2x. Negative 4 times x is negative 4x. And then negative 4 times 1 is negative 4. Combine your like terms and put my answer down here. And I'm going to get 2x squared minus 2x minus 4. And that is the area of the entire thing. All right, so now here's the tricky one. The area of the frame only without the picture. So I want the frame only, right? So I only want this piece the area of this piece right here. So I know the area of this piece and I know the area of the big piece. To get the inside piece, I'm gonna subtract the area of the big piece, which is this number right here, minus the area of the picture, which is this right here. So when I subtract polynomials, I gotta be careful. So I'm gonna take the 2x squared minus 2x minus four, that's the area of the whole shape, minus the area of the other shape, the inside shape, which is 2x squared minus 32x plus 126. And then when I do that, because I'm subtracting, you have to distribute the minus sign to the second set of parentheses. So I'm gonna have 2x squared minus 2x minus four, and then I distribute, so I get minus 2x squared plus 32x minus 126. And then when I combine my like terms, my x squareds cancel out. Negative 2x plus 32x is 30x. And then negative 4 minus 126 is negative 130. So there you go, 30x minus 130. So now I want you to try to finish the rest of the paper on your own. All right, in this one, we have a rectangular window that is four inches more than twice its width. The trim around the window is three inches wide, and we're label the length and width with expressions. So the first part is asking for the length of just the window. This is just the window right here. The length of this is four inches more than twice its width. So that's going to be 2w w plus 4. And the w is the width, right? So that's just w. Now, the entire length of the window and the frame. So, just to keep in mind, all the way around here is 3 inches wide, which means this is 3 inches and this is 3 inches. So I am adding to get this, the length, sorry, let's look at the length. To get this piece right here, I am adding 3 on this side and three on this side. So that's a total of adding six. So I'm gonna add six to this expression right here. 2w plus four plus six gives me 2w plus 10. Then the entire width of the window and the frame, again, I'm adding six, right? So like from here to here is w, I'm adding to get this whole length, you're adding from here to here, 
and from here to here. Because think, if I draw a line right here, isn't that the same length as this right here? It's just in a different place. So I'm going to do W plus 3 plus 3, which is W plus 6. All right. Now, use those expressions right now to find the perimeter of just the window, the perimeter of the window frame, and the area and the combined area. Stop the video completely, and then come back and see if you did it right. And so here are the answers. If you get stuck or got stuck, see if you can get help. These next three are again just review problems of what we just did, so see if you can do them without my help. So stop the video and then come back to see if you've got the right answers. And here are the answers to the last three. If you need help, make sure you seek it.